My name is Jian Xie, President, Founder of the Asia Culture and Education Society. Hi, enjoy the Power of Unity Leadership Conference on behalf of the ACAES USA. This is Bing Zhang, Professor of Biological Science at the University of Missouri. We are particularly proud of a younger generations whose involvement makes the future bright. My name is Brian Jennings, and I am a student volunteer at UT Dallas with ACAES. Hey guys, the youth president of ACAE USA wishes you a great forum. Best wishes to a very successful NCF. My name is Hai Long Jin. I'm the board director. Our organization has been actively supporting Asian communities civic engagement in the past years. We believe that all the races need to unite together in order to strengthen our power. Welcome. On behalf of the ACAES USA, I'd like to thank you for participating in this conference and send my very best wishes for a very successful event. This is Pam as a board director. Come to join us, NCLF 2021. We at the Asian Culture and Education Society would like to invite you to follow us and learn about future events. Please visit us at acaesusa.org. I appreciate all of our volunteers, donors to support us. So honored have the opportunity to host one of the NCLF 2021 session. And thank you, the organizer, AUC, and thank you, the sponsor, CLUSA. Give Asia Cultural and Education Society this opportunity to host one of the session, AEPI Community Contribution. Thank you so much for everyone being here and uh, appreciate our moderator, Mr. Hong Jun Chu. He is working hard to prepare this section for you. And uh, thank you, each of our speakers. Hi, my name is Shamalka Vig, and I am an ACAES USA Youth Council member. And today I'll be interviewing Dr. Sushil Kumar. I'm Sushil Kumar, and I am a professor at Lehigh University. I got my PhD uh, in electrical engineering also from MIT. I also got a degree from University of Michigan and Arbor also in electrical engineering. And prior to that, uh, before coming to USA, I got all my um, high school education and also undergraduate education in India. In general, everything that we do today, um, all the problems that we face today that we want to find solutions for, and that's why you need people who are expert in a broad, a wide variety of areas to tackle them. Everybody should contribute to the community, Asian Americans especially who come to US and then they have been through and especially who become go on and do a lot of hard work over the years and uh, study or become accomplished in science in fields of science or business or economics or, or social work or whatever it may be. They bring a lot of experience and they could serve as role models for the entire community, not just the Asian American community, through their um, experiences, by sharing their experiences and, and expertise, they can contribute to the community in general. The uh, Asian aspect of it is they could bring the aspects of their own culture, unique culture and traditions to people who here who have never been outside USA and who may not know about uh, the other parts, distant parts of the world. So this is a great way to introduce people to, to different cultures. Definitely uh, a good thing because the world is, as I said, uh, becoming more and more global and interconnected. So I think that's where they can contribute. And obviously, finally, I think because these people are accomplished, I think they should just give back and maybe if they could volunteer to teach or, or in some other way serve the community, that's always a good thing. Refugees and immigrants that come here to the United States of America to seek new lives and new opportunities. And one of those people who have seeking opportunities are 
the Cambodians who immigrated here in the 80s. One of those contributors to Asian nations as a whole is the award-winning environmentalist and filmmaker Kalyani Mom, telling the stories in the Rang Valley and the Lost World about how we as an individual can change the fabric of our existence, our actions can unravel many lives. May I introduce to you Kalyani Mom. And the reason for me being here, you know, is because I want to, you know, document what is happening. I want to document the people, you know, uprising, the people fighting, protesting, and, you know, really fighting for their lives. The second documentary that I'm going to be sharing with you is uh, another award-winning one of the greatest uh, documentary Lost World. Hi, my name is Jing Zhang. I'm the board member for Asian Culture and Education Society USA. Today, I have the honor to interview Karina Reyes. is an executive leadership for EY, and she has held multiple global leadership roles in uh, Fortune 500 companies. She's currently leading multiple nonprofit organizations. Sarah Leung is a consulting partner at EY with over 20 years of experience. She's also the executive sponsor for EY, Pan Asian Professional Network for the West region. I'd like to just share with you that um, one of the areas that I've been very passionate about is really around how can I contribute to Asian immigrants that have come to the United States recently and help them uh, you know, move from the current state that they're in to being able to thrive here in America. So I join, I'm part of the Texas Work um, Women's Foundation that's focused on the ORCID Giving Circle. The NOMI Network uh, focuses on enabling uh, a lot of Asians that have been part of um, human slavery, sex slavery, and helping them get reassimilated back. EY has been largely involved in working very closely with uh, several um, of these associations, AAPI, SN, several different groups that allow us to uh, help change the game. So we're part of some of the legislation. We're part of ensuring that within our company that we really have taken inclusion and diversity very seriously for our Asian Americans. So there's a lot of focus on promotions, a lot of focus around, um, you know, how do we help great, uh, break some of the challenges that we've seen uh, within the um, executive ranks where I, I had a father that um, 20 years ago uh, experienced an enormous amount of, um, you know, he was attacked while he was uh, walking home from work. He was, you know, my father was a first um, immigrant and, uh, you know, just trying to get by and just minding his own business when uh, a young kid, you know, went up and, and hit my father in the head. Luckily, my father wasn't hurt, but, you know, uh, emotionally, it was quite an impact for my dad. And to see that happen 20 plus years later was even more alarming because I thought that we had passed that. And uh, what AAPI has really made the massive, massive big change is how they um, you know, really created visibility in the media around this. And I am personally grateful for that because it is needed and it is something that I think all of us as Asian Americans need to pay more close attention to. Last year was extremely in my role as Pan Asian um, and diversity leader for the firm, I got to connect with a lot of our professionals and they were hurting. 
um, one of the things that we've done immediately was getting everyone together to just feel like they belong. People were staying at home, isolated, and some of our Pan Asian professionals are from overseas and their family and friends are back home in Asia, didn't have a lot of information on how they're doing, they're isolated here, and there was just a lot of anxiety and hurt. So one of the things that UI did immediately was creating a safe forum for our Pan Asian professionals as well as allies to get together so that we can hear and support each other through information sharing, education, as well as stories. Um, th this, this was very effective at all levels. It drove belonging. People feel like they have a safe place to be themselves. It opened up a network of Asian professionals that they didn't know existed before we were we all went virtual. So they actually got more friends and more coworkers that they could rely on. It also started bubble up some of the needs for additional support for our Penn Asian professionals all throughout EY. You know, in addition to taking care of our own people, EY looked outside and saw that our communities are also hurting and require additional assistance. One of the organizations EY work with is Ascent. And Ascent's mission is to drive current and future leaders. It's very focused on career promotion, career growth. And during this time, we realized there's a need to drive a social aspect of Asian well being and you know, personal progression. And this is where EY partner with Ascent to focus on building a foundation to cater and serve the Asian community. My name is Brian Jennings. I am currently a student at the University of Texas at Dallas, and I'm currently working with the Asian Cultural Education Society. I would like to introduce you to Miss Kimberly. She is the director over the Gems and Minerals Center of Excellence at the Perot Museum. So we have a beautiful nephrite jade, uh, nephrite jade carving of a carp turning into a dragon, and that's um, from the 19th century. Then we have on the right hand side is another dragon carving, but that's out of a mineral called cinnabar. And uh, the lender of that piece, he picked that up recently in a gift store outside of Xi'an, um, outside of what is it, the first uh, emperor's tomb. And then everything else is what we call copper based. So we have the blue is azurite and the green is malachite. And some of these, um, are, these are actually all pieces that have been found relatively recently, but from mines that date back to the Bronze Age. Um, and so this piece over here, this is, we call that the happy feet, because the malachite in the middle looks like little feet, and it's surrounded by azurite, the blue. The piece right here is a mineral called stibnite, and we would mine that for the antimony. So that's a mercury-based mineral. So these are just all a variety of minerals from modern metal mining sites. But the piece in the back, that's quartz coated in um, hematite, which is an iron-based mineral. So that's why it has that orange, kind of rusty look to it. And this piece, this beautiful brand piece, this is, it was stibnite and it is uh, saved from a pocket in southeastern China, We're just all a variety of smaller sized pieces um, from various collections. And we've got everything in here from the blue is a mineral called hemimorphite. And it's actually fun because on the back of the piece is the hemimorphite too. So we put a mirror in the back so you can see. This case is looking at gem and precious metal species. So you might recognize some of these. Uh, in the back, we have a garnet called spessartine, that's the orange. The blue is turquoise. In the middle, we have a beautiful piece of gold and then um, silver wire. And the bottom, we've got peridot. There are, uh, those little pieces are two diamond crystals. Species that have been found, uh, the best examples of species that have been found in China. It's uh, titled the Wutang uh, Princess. And the one at the bottom is called, um, it's pyrite again. These are all the nature's art of nature's art. These are all minerals that look like something else. But thank you so much for visiting or getting, I guess, seeing this exhibit.
Um, it closes October 17th. I would like to thank Ms. Kimberly for helping to create such a beautiful exhibit. Her 20 years of experience in the field of gems and minerals has helped create an amazing exhibit showing nature's art of China.